Welcome back for more AP Biology. This particular talk is going to deal with the cell cycle, which is something that we started last time. And so in particular, what we're going to look at is, what is the cycle that happens when cells divide? So same objectives as the last one, same references from the text. Where have we been so far? Because again, it's nice to get a refresher. So we started talking about statistics, which led us to dealing with the big world of ecology. Ecology led us to ask questions about natural selection and how we got the organisms that we have, and that requires us to deal with inheritance patterns and reproduction. From there, we can combine natural selection and inheritance patterns, and we can talk about population genetics, which then started to beg the question of, well, can we do a better job of describing ecology, natural selection, inheritance, and po population genetics? The answer was, sure, we could talk about cell structure and cells. From dealing with cell structure, what you could then start to do is deal with how things move in and out of a cells or within cells. But then you could also ask the question of, well, how does that work on a big scale with organisms like us or with plants or with a fungus or whatever? So we could deal with the movements of substances. But that all requires cells to divide. So how do cells divide? And that's what we've been spending a little bit of time on. But now we're at the point of, is there a pattern to how they divide? And the answer is, absolutely. Last time we looked at the two processes, mitosis and meiosis, which both seem very similar, but they turn out to have a few things that are a little bit different between them. Mitosis starts with one cell that splits apart its chromosomes into half so that each cell that results, what we would call the daughter cells, turn out to have the exact same genetic composition as the mother cell, so the starting point. The difference between them was the mother cell had chromosomes that had somehow replicated and they had two parts to each chromosome, what we called chromatids. And what we do in mitosis is we make it so we can see the chromosomes, align them all in the center, and we split them apart using microtubules. Once you end up having our two cells genetically the same. Meiosis on the other hand, which is to be reduced in status, happens in two phases. We take the chromosomes that are similar to each other, what we call homologous chromosomes, they pair up, Turns out there's a phenomenon that occurs called crossing over or recombination, where they trade parts, a way of increasing variation. We take that and we then split apart the homologous pairs of chromosomes, line them all in the center, split them apart. What we then do is we repeat mitosis, which is we take the chromosomes, which have the two chromatids, and then we separate out the chromatids. The result of that is we get four cells that are not identical, they all turn out to be different from each other, thus lending evidence for Mendel's rule of independent assortment, but they also all turn out to be genetically different, haploid, from each other, as well as from the mother cell. The catch then becomes, so there has to be more than just that. So as we look at cells, this turns out to be an allium root tip, which is the onion root tip, what we notice are there are cells that are dividing and cells that aren't, and we give it a name. The cells that are dividing, we say, are in an M phase, which is the mitosis phase. You could also look at the cells that would be undergoing meiosis. I'm not showing them here because they wouldn't be found in this particular spot, and we, they would also be in M phase, which would be the meiosis phase. But you also have cells that just have black dots for nuclei. And the question is, so what's going on there? Well, that's somehow in between the M phases. So we would call that interphase. It's the space in between the M phases. What we do know is something is happening during interphase. There is something that happens because there are signals that can warp what occurs. We do know that if we were to take a cell that or the cytoplasm from a cell that turns out to be in M phase or is about to enter into M phase, like we could see something's going on, when you inject it into certain cells, we will trigger mitosis. But we can take it from interphase and nothing occurs. So we know that there's something that's going on. There's something happening inside of these cells. We also know, and I don't have it shown, that if we look at interphase, the composition of the cell changes. So we know at some point in interphase, the, the amount of genetic information, the proteins and the DNA, 
increase in number. We know that that happens, and last time we talked about how we could figure out that, yeah, that has to happen. What we also know is there has to be some type of control mechanism for the cell cycle, for the cells reproducing. The way that we know that is because cells don't naturally grow uncontrollably, because we have a word for when they grow uncontrollably, and we call it cancer or a tumor. Cancerous growths are uncontrolled growths, but that's not what we normally see. And when we look at cells and they look a little funny, typically what happens is the cell then dies. The fancy word for cell death is called apoptosis, which is the word that says apoptosis, but whenever you see a PTO, it's pronounced toe. So it's apoptosis or apoptosis. So you don't say the P. The cancerous cells, they don't know what to do. They just do whatever they want. So clearly there's some type of control mechanism and in cancer, it's not being followed, but in regular cells, it's being followed. What we also know is not all cells divide. What I have here are two examples of human cell or animal tissue cells that don't divide. The left-hand side, that's actually a picture of a liver. And what you happen to see in there are what we call hepatocytes or liver cells. For the most part, they don't divide. But they can be coaxed into dividing, which means... There's probably some version of the cell cycle that involves you don't grow, or maybe that's not part of the cycle at all. Maybe it's like a little side step, and then maybe you're allowed to step back in. This picture on the right turns out to be of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is an oddball in that, for the most part, it doesn't divide, but you can convince it to divide. But there are other types of muscle, like heart muscle or skeletal muscle, that, for the most part, do not like dividing although there are ways to trick it into it, but we are doing the tricking. Your body doesn't tend to divide those. So when we look, what we know is there has to be some point at which we're making new genetic information. We're increasing the amount of chromatin. And we also know that there must be a way to say, don't divide, or we're not going to divide. There's like a rest point. But we also know that there are checkpoints along the way. So off of that, what we can do is we can take some guesses. So what we can do is kind of break it up into three pieces, because I know that if I'm going to replicate my chromatin, I probably need to get ready to do that and probably get some parts ready. So we probably have like a pre-division or replication phase, and then we'll have a replication phase, and then we'll probably need to get ready for mitosis. So we'll probably have a pre-mitosis phase, and then we'll have a mitosis. And then we'll probably have that you're not dividing thing off to the side. And what we tend to see is that exact same pattern. Most people agree that, yeah, that's what the pattern probably should be. And what we'll see later on is we have data, experimental data, that says that is exactly what happens, even though we could use logic to put these pieces together. The catch is we're now at a standstill again, and that's kind of a problem. We started the year looking at ecology. We started with the big picture. What can we see from up high where we don't need to look any further than what the organism is or the organisms interacting with each other? And what we realized is really quickly that that's not, what, that's not all we can do. We actually needed to add something else. So we added, we zoomed in a little bit more, and we started looking at cells. But we're now almost at the point where we can't really figure out what's happening with these cells. We need to go a little bit closer. And that's going to be entering the world of chemistry. So we now need to talk about the molecular version of everything. The molecular version of evolution. The molecular version of cells. The molecular version of energy. The molecular in version of behavior. That's what's coming up next with us.